Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about getting an apartment with bad credit. So this is a question that I've gotten a lot over the years since I've been on YouTube. I've seen it a lot, I've talked about it a lot, I've experienced it before, so I'm gonna speak, I can speak from experience. Over time, I've seen a lot of profiles, a lot of credit profiles, and a lot of people mistake having bad credit with having high credit utilization. Now, I do understand that having high credit utilization will impact your score, and that number may put you in that bad, fair credit range, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have bad credit. It just means that you can't manage your money, well, at least it looks that way, um, or you do not have enough money you know, to be able to pay off your credit card debts. But either way it goes, it's a money issue. Your credit profile doesn't tell the whole story all the time. Sometimes you got the money, you know, and the credit just may suck. Sometimes your credit may be good, but the funds ain't there, you know. But a high utilization doesn't equate to bad credit. It just means you need more money. You need to pay your credit cards down. And I promise as soon as you pay those credit cards down, you will be good to go when, as far as paying, um, I mean, as far as applying for an apartment goes. As long as there is nothing else on your credit profile that puts you in that it, you, you have bad credit. So that would be something like, you know, having derogatory accounts such as charge offs, um, closed accounts with the balance, uh, collections, public records, things like that, which will make it appear that, you know, you have a bad credit profile. So yeah, just learn the difference. So do you have a high utilization or do you have a bad credit profile? Because they're different. Separate the two. Stop equating high utilization with bad credit because it's not the same. Pay your credit cards down, your credit score goes up, problem solved, go apply for the credit. Why well, keep saying apply for the credit? Go apply for the apartment complex that you really want, you know, and that's that's it. Now, if you have bad credit, you have to be real with yourself. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to people with high utilization. I'm not talking to people who don't have credit, okay? I'm talking to people with a bad credit profile who want to get an apartment. All right, so... The main thing here is being real with yourself. If you don't be real with nobody else during this process of home searching, apartment hunting, you gotta be real with yourself, okay? You have to be real with yourself. Okay, so what that money looking like, okay? That's number one. What does the credit profile looks like, okay? So let's talk about money first. Now, how much money you need saved, how much money you make, it all depends on wherever you are living on earth, okay? It just, it varies from person to person. What is your ideal living situation? Okay, everybody wants a different type of lifestyle. Some of you wanna be downtown in the city, you wanna have the, the views of the city. Some of you don't want all that fancy stuff. You just want somewhere to lay your head. So the spectrums are different. So the answer is also gonna be different, okay? so I'm, But I'm gonna try to just keep the information here so it, it can apply to you or you. All right, so the tips. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it, make a plan. Okay, so you need to give yourself time. That's the main thing here. Time needs to be on your side. A lot of people will come to me with aggressive goals, sometimes realistic goals, but you don't give yourself enough time to reach the goals. So the main thing here is you already know you don't like your current living situation. So why would you wait 30 days out to determine that your credit messed up and you ain't you got money issues and you want to move? How are we going to make something shake in 30 days to get you where you really want to be? you know, and clean up your credit profile in 30 days. You have to give yourself time. So at least give yourself three to six months, 69 if possible, a year is better. Okay, to get your money together so that you can get whatever you want. And this will also allow you the time to clean up that credit profile. Okay, so for those of you who don't have to leave the nest, don't leave the nest too soon. A lot of people are blessed with the opportunity to be able to live at home and not pay. And if that applies to you, live at home, for as long as you can, but be getting your ducks in a row while you are living at home because you do not want to get stuck there or fall into those habits. It is great to be able to stay home. And I've learned from watching 90 Day Fiance that it's a cultural thing, you know, as far as having to leave the nest in the first place. So while you are there, take advantage of not having to pay bills and stack your money and plan wisely, okay? Um, and also give, your, give yourself what you want because if you don't, you're gonna start digging into your savings and spend it recklessly. So make sure you putting something for the side for you for your right now pleasure. And then you are making sure that you put majority of it up for moving and having money for that, all right? So um, start shopping around next. 
So in order for anything, for all this stuff to make sense, you got to know where you want to stay. You need to know what budget, what range you're in, what it's looking like. You need your what you really want and the this will do. I'll be comfortable here. So have what you really want in mind, but then also have that, you know what? This is nice too. I can stay here for 12 months while I work on getting to where I really want to be. So have you, not your backup, but just that one that's just like, you know, I can do this. It's more reasonable, you know, but have your, the one that you feel like is, is too far-fetched that you may not be, but you might be able to get it. Have that one there to the one that you know that you really want. You already know which one it is that you got in mind because you've been eyeballing it for a minute. You know what you want. So go and put you a list together of places you want to be. Um, don't apply right at this moment, but go tour some properties, okay? I'm heavy on touring the properties, but I'm even heavier on touring the properties at nighttime because what you see in the day is not always what you're going to get at night. If the apartment complex isn't in a gated community, by all means, let's go ride around there at night to go see what's good. We need to see, you know, scope out the scene. Now, I know y'all probably like, girl, what they got to do again in the apartment? Everything. Because what glitters ain't always gold, okay? I'm telling you, I've seen some beautiful things in the morning, but at night, oh my God, completely different story, okay? So take care of the logistics right here first. Now let's get into what that profile needs to look like. Credit score is gonna vary property to property. It's gonna depend on whether you're deal dealing with a, a single property owner or a major company. That process is gonna look different depending on where you're trying to go, how much it costs, what area, that process is gonna be different. So where your credit score needs to be is gonna vary, okay? And also states, countries. I don't know where everybody at watching my videos, but it's gonna vary. Ideally, you wanna have your credit in the good range, okay? So we're thinking 640 plus, 650 plus range. I've seen people get approved for apartments and I have in the past with a 620, okay? And in some instances, a 640, but sometimes you need a co-signer to help you, okay? I know a lot of us don't necessarily have family members that can co-sign. So, you know, we want, that's why giving yourself time is vital in the situation so that you can get your affairs in order as far as your credit profile goes. All right, so um, be upfront about your credit, okay, when you're dealing with uh, people. Be upfront about the situation as soon as you get there, okay? This is your way to figure out what they're looking for in a tenant, okay? It's more easier when you're dealing with an individual opposed to a company because there's more flexibility on you know how much weight your credit even carries in this application process okay you know and so if you're dealing with a single property owner and i'm going to tell you guys how to find out how to figure out those properties and where they're at you know um it's it's easier to do the things that i'm about to tell you than it is to deal with the big ass organization and company or whatever because they the people that's in the front office can't really bend any rules you know they can just be sympathetic and empath empathize with you but it's only so much they can do you know all right so um when you're dealing with a single property owner just let them know up front like hey you know i'm in the process of rebuilding my credit but i do have a steady income i've been working at this place for x amount of years i got this amount saved, you know, I am fully prepared to be able to, you know, um, take on the responsibility of living in your space. You know, I just want an opportunity to show you. Um, the problem has been either I'm new to credit or, you know, um, I've just had a little issue in the past where I just didn't know how to manage my credit cards. It was a little overwhelming for me, but now I'm in a much better space, you know, and I can handle this now. And even if you want to show them, like, look, I can handle it now. And this is what it's looking like XYZ. This is your chance to talk to them. Now, if you're dealing with a company, apartment, you go to a property and you're talking to the um, leasing consultant, I mean, you still can talk to them because they can let you know up front, you know, well, this may not be the, the one for you, but maybe we have a better option over here. Maybe they have a sister property that's more affordable, more um, or affordable housing type situation where credit really doesn't have that much of an impact. It's all about your income. Okay, so just talking about it is it's like, it's vital. Get comfortable being uncomfortable, talking about uncomfortable things with people who can help you, okay? All right, now how to find single property owners. So those would be like your rent by owner. You're looking for private owner rentals. Google searches should be looking like this. So rent by owner, private owner rentals, local private landlords, um, going on Zillow or hot pads. 
and there is a, um, a um, box. It's like additional options or something like that. I'll put it on the screen and you can check um, for rent by owner. You can click that option. That way it will eliminate all the other things that you can, you are dealing directly with the person. That's how kind of in my situation we are now. We weren't really having any issues credit or money wise. It was more of a timing thing. Like we were pressed for time. We needed to move quickly. So um, trying to get the apartment, nothing like the time wouldn't allow us to be here where my husband could start work. So we looked on Zillow, did the for rent by owner. We found a, a three bedroom, two and a half bath, condo, two car garage out here in Dallas. And we were able to communicate with the owners. We met with them. We drove from Birmingham, came out here, met with them. Uh, we looked presentable. Uh, we laughed, we related, we talked, we were open, we were upfront about what, how we work. I'm self-employed. He's an assistant manager. This is how much we make. We're, we need to, we need to move quickly because he starts within a week. We were right. We were, they were ready for us to move in that same day. We were able to get back here, get back to Birmingham and move in the spot that we're in now, just by talking and communicating, being upfront people and having um, the funds ready to be able to make the move. Okay. Sometimes you just need to have that human interaction. Okay. So you don't just appear to be a transaction or just a number like you would appear to be if you go deal with these big apartment complexes owned by these big ass companies. Okay. So sometimes it's better to work one on one. So anyways, um, that's how we found this place. And I highly recommend and highly suggest you do the same thing. So Zillow, Hotpad, Nextdoor, Bionor.com, um, and just make sure that you use those boxes and check in the additional options tab and click for rent by owner so you can eliminate all the other things and just get down to business so you can talk to a person. All right. Number two is just having a steady income. Money matters. Okay. If you want to move, you got to have the funds. Again, I can't tell you how much to have saved because it's going to vary on how much your apartment costs, where you live. You know, it varies from state to state, country to country, wherever you are, like it's gonna vary. But the fact of the matter is you gotta have some money put up, okay? At least three times the amount of the rent if you can't do double. You need to have that cushion, okay? You need to be ready at all times to let them know, hey, even if I need to make an additional payment, I got it, like I can do that. So saving money is vital, that's why setting aside enough time for yourself is so important so you don't just have to be you no know, anywhere okay you want to be comfortable where you live all right so having your pay stubs your bank statements ready and on hand if you're self-employed um 1099s you know with you so that you can show them that yes i got the money even if my credit ain't reflecting that i'm capable i have the funds to be able to do this okay all right so next is being able to pay rent in advance or to offer um, a larger security deposit. So money talks, okay, believe it or not. And I'm sure everybody knows by now that money talks. Money talks, okay? People love money. We're greedy, okay? We want money. We want lots of it. We want more of it. We need it. We crave it. We want to eat it. We want to lick it. We want money. We need it, all right? Money talks. Um, when your credit isn't backing you up because like I said, credit your credit profile don't tell the whole story. It tells one side and it's either gonna make you look really good or it's gonna make you look broke as fuck. Okay, it's gonna make you like you can't manage money. It's gonna make you look like you have poor money management skills. It's one or the other when it comes to your credit profile. There is no in between. They're looking at you, oh, we can't or oh, mm -mm, denied. It's one or the other. Okay, so having that money saved is vital okay money talks when you're meeting up with your your private landlords they want to see that like look again you're gonna see some stuff on my credit like it ain't bad but you know it ain't the best but i'm, I'm making my payments on time as you can see i ain't missed the payment okay well i can do this just let me show you I got the money, you know, like I can put down more if need be just to show you that I'm good. I can set up automatic payments, you know, just to show you that I am legit, like I can do this. Talk, but also have that money be able to back you up. All right, last one on the list is having a co-signer. Now, the only reason I put this on the list is so people know that it is an option because honestly, this is an option, like it is a method. If you have somebody that is willing to co-sign for you. Now, in any other video, 
any other one of my videos when it comes to this topic, I'm telling people don't do it. I'm telling people don't do it because I ain't never seen, I ain't never seen a situation play out where somebody has co-signed for anybody and it did backfire on them. I've never seen it play out, you know, in a way where it did not backfire because people ha have always been in over their head and just like, well, I know my mama co-signed for me or this family member or whoever, whatever. And I've never seen it play out right, but there you can always get somebody to cuss on for you. And I don't even want to elaborate, but you know, basically for those of you who are new, that just means that somebody with better credit than you is going to be responsible if you cannot make your payments on time. If you get evicted, then that's also going to impact them. If you fall behind, then they're going to be getting phone calls. If you go into collections, then they're also going to be getting phone calls because of you. Okay, so do not take people that will co-sign for you for granted. Okay, appreciate them, thank them, honor them. Okay, do not screw them over. If you know for a fact you're not good with managing money, don't you even put yourself in a position. Don't put them in a position to have to take the fall for your mess ups, okay? Now, when it comes to getting an apartment, this is the best way to do it, okay? Single property is the best way to go if you are struggling with bad credit. Single property owned apartment complexes, uh, homes, townhomes, condos are the best way to go. If you are looking to get an apartment or a home and your credit profile doesn't isn't the best right now, you're actively working on it, okay? This is the best way to go because we as people can understand, we can give grace, we are willing to work with you. We can put agreements in place, written agreements in place. If you mess up, you still can get the boot, just like you would be if you were at a traditional apartment complex, if you went the other route, okay? This doesn't mean that this is the easy route because at the end of the day, you are still in a person's space and they wanna make sure you're taking care of their space and you better, especially if they give you an opportunity to live in their home, take care of their, their property, you know, but at the same time, if you aren't in a position credit wise to be able to go out and just, just apply, just walk into a, an establishment, like, look, I want this apartment. I want to apply today, like, or go online and do that. This will be the route for you because you get to explain yourself. They, they are more flexible. They, they may be more lenient and understanding, you know, and be willing to help you you know, or point you in the right direction, okay? So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, check out my other video, more and more, is way more in detail than this one, but I really felt like this, I just want to just narrow it down because at the end of the day, the process is the same. You gotta have money, you have to work on your credit, you know, but as you're actively working on your credit, going the single property owner route is more, um, would be more feasible for someone who's actively working on their credit than it would be to try to go to a bigger company management, um, apartment complex or whatever else that route until you're more established because there's so there's only so much a leasing consultant can do for you. But the person who owns the property, you know, they would be more lenient. They, they may be, you know, and I know it varies according to state. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment below, but I will have, um, all information linked in the description box as well as my other video that is more detailed where I share more of my personal experience. But this is the route that we just went to move to Texas. So I know for a fact it works. Okay, peace.